Batman's keyboard, or was it Alfred's? Let's just call it Wayne Enterprises keyboard. This is the Logitech DeNovo Edge that was featured in Batman The Dark Knight. So the DeNovo Edge is one of the coolest keyboards ever made, as far as I'm concerned. Not to mention, it's good enough for Batman. It came out in 2003, so it is a literal antique at this point, 19 years old. And it looks beautiful today as it did when it came out. So, let's talk about it. This thing is laser cut. A laser cut keyboard out of a single sheet of plexiglass. Now it sounds a lot less impressive, but it's beautiful plexiglass. It's clear with like a black printed back, so it looks incredible. And down here we have this nice brushed aluminum with the raised Logitech logo. And the Logitech logo is also CNC'd with these little tiny ridges on it to have a nice texture. And it comes out as a nice package. This thing is 11 millimeters thick. Check it out, super, super thin. Here's the USB receiver for it. It's almost the same size as the USB receiver. That is how small this keyboard is. The keys have 3.2 millimeters of travel. They call this a uh, perfect key or perfect touch or something like that, but it has a good key feel. Uh, nice travel there. And the edges all the way around, since we're still talking about the design a little bit, are all beveled in, which creates a very, very cool look since everything is either perfectly flat or at angle on this keyboard. You can see the wrist rest there. It's also angled. And this is, I mean, the design's beautiful, but that's not even the cool part of that keyboard. We're gonna get into that here in a second. So it can sit completely flat on your desk, which looks great. Not very noisy, obviously. Uh, they're not mechanical switches. They're like a button membrane switch, rubber membrane. So you guys can hear all of the typing sounds there. And it also has little legs you can flip down. There's the keyboard with the legs flipped down. It's a little bit more bouncy, just a tiny bit more bouncy when the legs are flipped down because it flexes in the middle, just a little bit, not bad. But let's flip those things back up. On the back, it's orange. It looks very cool. It's got two contacts for the desktop charging cradle there. Set it in its charging cradle and you can see all of the lights turn on for the first time when the keyboard wakes up. And the lights are one of the coolest things on this keyboard. So pull it back off of its cradle here. Let's turn it on so you can see it. There you go. You can see all the lights come on. This thing has a ton of features. So it has two touch sensitive surfaces on it. There's the red icon showing the Bluetooth's not connected. This thing doesn't really have Bluetooth. It has a Bluetooth receiver. Uh, Bluetooth 2.0, I have never once gotten this to sync with the actual like native Bluetooth stack on something. This is the Windows version. I think you have to use this dongle if you actually want to use the keyboard. <laughs> Even funnier, instead of pairing like Bluetooth, it has connect buttons, just like all the old school RF receivers did. This is before Logitech made the unifying receiver. This works. It's just not nearly as good as the unifying receiver is. So laser cut plexiglass, a beautiful design. Now let's talk about these touch sensitive surfaces. This is a mouse. You can see it light up when I touch it there and it works really well as a mouse. And then it has these little uh, white lines and the white lines, if you touch them and then roll around the mouse like that are supposed to become uh, scroll wheels for horizontal and vertical scrolling here. So uh, this way is horizontal and this way is vertical scrolling. That doesn't work very well at all because it never finds your finger and registers it like perfectly on that dot. So it typically ends up just moving the mouse and not scrolling. Down here, left click, right click, mute button, dedicated mute button with its own light, which is very nice. Here is the volume. You can see it follows my finger, sort of. <laughs> the volume controls, not great, but it does work. Here we have a Windows key with a little light for the Windows key. And then if we push FN, it will illuminate all the other lights on this keyboard. So there you go, holding it down and it shows you all the alternate functions for the FN key. We've got phone, uh, search, mail, home, media transport controls, uh, back, stop, play, pause, and forward. And then hotkeys A, B, C, and D, and also scroll lock and pause break lights up. Once you let off, they fade out pushed back down, the lights fade on. What a nice touch. They don't just snap out of it. They kind of remind you that this is an elegant and very expensive keyboard. Speaking of very expensive, I think this keyboard was $249. And now they're selling for almost $700. 
because they don't exist anymore and people love them. There's really never been another keyboard like it and I doubt there ever will be again. And this one is, I mean, they're very old at this point. People are trying to keep them alive or keep the memories of this keyboard alive because it's crazy. Or maybe they just watched Batman and they want to buy the keyboard for that. If you're buying this keyboard because of the Batman movie, there's actually a Dark Knight Rises version of this. I think it has darker gray, if I remember right, in the brushed aluminum. And there should only be 30 of those in the US. So good luck finding one of those. I'm sure they're all in trash cans by now or maybe there's one or two left, but for the most part, if there was only 30 of these keyboards, eh, I doubt those exist at this point. There's a couple more buttons on here to talk about. We've got Sleep Wake, it has a light. We've got Magnifier In, Magnifier Out. Those also light up to tell you what you're doing. We've got Magnifier Percentage, which I would assume you touch and then type in like 75% and you can change your screen zoom to that. And we also have an additional left click button. I'm not really sure why you need that when you have a dedicated one on the mouse. This is just kind of weird, something you would typically forget about. There's no way to power this keyboard externally. There's not like a USB input or anything like that. You have to rely on its lithium ion battery. It has a 950 milliamp hour lithium ion battery in it. And it does last for quite a while. They said 15 minutes of charge time would give you a full day of usage on the Denovo Edge. That's probably true. It, it tracks with all the current peripherals that you can just plug in for a couple of minutes and then they'll run all day. Or two hours of charge time and a little bit of change would give you a full month's usage. So, really good battery life in reality. But I'd say most of these now are getting so old that they're probably stuck on their charger. So there you have it. It looks incredible on your desk. It looks incredible charging. And what would you use this for if it wasn't on your desk? Exactly what it was designed for and what we were doing in 2003, HTPCs. Little computers, sometimes full-size ATX cases, you'd set beside your TV to serve up media and you needed to be able to control those from your couch. This was way before smartphones were ubiquitous and way before Plex. I mean, media was a different ball game back then. So you needed a way to sit on your couch and control something like this that was hooked up to your TV, probably with a VGA cable. Uh, VGA is the only display output on this computer. <laughs> That's what it was like back in 2003. It was a different world. So if you had something like this and a de novo edge, you had the setup where you were Batman. Thank you guys so much for watching Tech Throwback. I can't wait to see you on the next one.